Okay, today's video is entitled The Periodic Table and the Atom. Okay, um, these are the vocabulary words that we are going to go over and use in this video. The first one is the period. The periods on the periodic table are the rows. Each row is called a period. The groups on the periodic table are the columns. Each column is called a group. And then we have this very special word, of course, the atom. When we talk about an atom, I mean something that is neutral. It is a particle that has no charge. It, is, it has a neutral charge. And the reason it has a neutral charge is because atoms have the same number of protons and electrons. Now, yes, we can have isotopes, and yes, of course, we can have ions. But in this case, when we say atom, when I say atom, I mean something that is neutral because it has the same number of protons and electrons. Okay, protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. If you have the same number of protons, 10 protons, plus 10 negatively charged electrons, if you add plus 10 plus minus 10, you get zero. Okay, and then of course there is the atomic number, which is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. That is the thing that identifies what kind of atom it is, what element it is. It's the number of protons in the nucleus. That's why it's called the atomic number, because it identifies the atom, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. All right, okay, here we go. Here is our typical periodic table. And as we said before, um, the rows are called periods, and there are seven periods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now some people might ask, well here is eight and nine, but these two, you can see it says here, lanthanides and actinides, these two rows down here, they actually go right in here like a puzzle. They should be, this periodic table should be kind of twice as long. And that's why we don't put those in there. Usually we show them down here because it would be too long to fit on a piece of paper. But these go right in here. So these are kind of part of six and seven. The rows are the periods. There are seven of them. The groups, the groups are the columns. Each column is a group. And Nowadays, we number them 1 through 18. Some periodic tables have uh, these 1a, 2a, 3b, 4b, and or Roman numerals. Those are kind of an archaic group numbering system. We Now we just say group 1, group 2, group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and the noble gases, group 18. Periods and groups, all right? And then this periodic table you can see for each block on the periodic table, for each element, we have, as I'm going to explain, this whole number, which we call the atomic number, this element symbol, which is the element symbol, and then there's the average atomic mass. But one thing that's kind of missing from this periodic table are the names of the elements. But this is the standard way a periodic table looks. Atomic number, symbol, um, average atomic mass, and then most of them would have a name, but I took, I've got one without the names. Okay, now here is a block on the periodic table. This is the typical thing you see, and as I said before, the name of the element is not shown here. And you should be able to really name most of the elements just by looking at this thing, which we call the symbol, and this is the symbol Mg, which stands for magnesium. The next thing is this number, which this is the atomic number. That is the atomic number. That tells us that in every atom of magnesium, there are 12 protons, because the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Every atom of magnesium has 12 protons. If you have an atom that has 12 protons in it, then it is an atom of magnesium. It is something that we have decided to call magnesium. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. The number of protons identifies the atom. 12 identifies the element. 12 protons equals magnesium. If you have 13 protons, you have something else. If you have 11 protons, you have something else. This number at the bottom here is the average atomic mass. And we will talk about that in a future video, but I just wanted to point that out. We're not going to use that in this video. Now here's another one, Fe. Do you know what Fe stands for? Fe stands for iron, ferrous, iron. This is the periodic table block for iron. Fe is the symbol for iron. Every atom of iron, get, you guessed it, has 26 protons. 
If it has 26 protons in an atom, then it's iron, and this is the average atomic mass, which I said we will talk about in a future video. Okay, now, just for the periodic table and really just for atoms, these are some typical questions that you should be able to answer. This, of course, is just a part of the periodic table, and the question is beryllium. Where is beryllium? Okay, beryllium is right here. BE is the symbol for beryllium. And the question is, how many protons are there in a neutral atom of beryllium? Well, you know, for beryllium, this is the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus, so therefore, you guessed it, every atom of beryllium has four protons in its nucleus. Okay, now here's another question, a little trickier. How many electrons are there in a neutral atom of beryllium? Now, the key word here, of course, besides beryllium, is neutral. It's neutral. If it's neutral, we know the number of protons equals the number of electrons, or the number of electrons equals the number of protons. And if it's beryllium and it has four protons, four pluses, in order for it to be neutral, it has to have four negatives. So that means it has four electrons. All right, an atom, a neutral atom, the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal to each other. Four protons, oh, if it's neutral, then it must also have four electrons. All right, okay, let's try the same thing for another element, potassium. Hmm, I wonder which of these is potassium. Okay, look right there, K, that is the symbol for potassium. In German, they say kalium. So that is where that symbol comes from, potassium. The German word for potassium is kalium. And you can see, let's just answer the same two questions. How many protons are there in a neutral atom of potassium? Well, let's see. Protons, let's look at the periodic table. Hmm, the 19, the 39. Oh, yeah, that's right. The 19 is the atomic number. Therefore, it has 19 protons. How many electrons are there in a neutral atom of beryllium? Well, let's see. Hmm, electrons. It's neutral. It's potassium. If it's neutral, then the number of protons and the number of electrons has to be the same. So therefore, it's 19. Okay, now let's go through and answer these questions. How many electrons are there in a neutral atom of sodium? Okay, now, where is sodium? Well, this is sodium right here, natrium. Okay, that is sodium. How many electrons? It's neutral. The number of electrons and the number of protons has to be the same. So that would be 11. 11 protons, 11 neutrons, atomic number 11. Therefore, that is 11. Okay, now we want to name an element whose neutral atom has 38 electrons. So this time I want the name of the atom. Okay, or the name of the element. It's neutral. It has 38 electrons. Well, if it's neutral, an atom, okay, then it must also have 38 protons. And we look for number 38, and we have strontium. All right? Now, name the element whose neutral atom has 20 protons. Now, you might be thinking, oh, this is a little throwing me off. You don't really need to know that it's neutral. This is just kind of a maybe misleading, not actually misleading, but you don't need to know that it's neutral. Name the element whose atom has 20 protons. Because if it has 20 protons, it doesn't matter whether it's neutral or charged, actually. If it has 20 protons, it has to be calcium. Okay? So those are the types of questions. Number of electrons, number of protons. Okay, what is the element based on the number of protons or the number of electrons? Atoms are neutral. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up in the below or leave me a nice comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.